Steph Johnson from Barnabas Aid joins us back on the program today. Uh, as we do each month, we focus on the persecuted church around the world, many places that you may not have heard of. I hadn't heard of this one before. It's called Eritrea, and it's based in East Africa. Good morning, Steph. Welcome back. Kia ora. Good Kia ora. to be back. I always love talking with you and you and the audience. Hey, uh, so tell us about Eritrea and this part of the world you've you know you've been sharing some stories with me off air and um it sounds pretty grim with what christians are facing in this part of the world yeah it's not an easy place to be a christian that's for sure um eritrea is a is governed by a marxist government so um the heart of that is just basically a lot of atheism and and not really any belief in religion full stop so um when you are a christian in eritrea um you're persecuted quite significantly for your faith um, just because of your faith. Yeah. And so uh, I'm glad we're talking about Eritrea today because it's this little tiny country nuzzled right in between um, Ethiopia and uh, Sudan, and or not Sudan, sorry, um, just nuzzled right there in the east. And it's just one of those countries that you don't think about, nobody talks about, but Christians there need our prayers and they need us to, to advocate for them, to step in the gap for them and just really lift them up and pray that they're strong in their faith. Sure. Um, despite the persecution. I've heard it's been referred to as Africa's North Korea. That's pretty severe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not a not a name I'd really like to be associated with, to be no, honest. But no. yeah, I mean, that's that's the kind of harshness. You know, the first time I heard about Eritrea was um, before I even started with Barnabas. And um, there was talk about this country, Eritrea, and Christians were actually held in um, shipping containers. What? that get extremely hot in the in the summer and extremely cold in the winter and i just remember thinking man how do you i mean prison in eritrea is not fun anyway um but to be stuck in a shipping container um and held there as your prison i mean the terrible conditions that they have to face and it's notorious for just really bad conditions i mean if you're in prison it's not going to be eating you know the awesome meals and things like that you're you're being tortured you're being um you know assaulted you're it's just sometimes go without food without medicine it's just a terrible place to be in prison and to be a christian full stop yeah and now i understand there's um well looking at your website it talks quite a bit about it there's probably hundreds of christians who have um been in dire situations there but in particular you talk about some pastors that have been in prison uh, for something like 20 years and they haven't even had a trial. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's, again, just the injustice there. I think um, that the, those three pastors, it was a really grim kind of thing to have to you know be thinking about. But in, in May of 2020, 20, uh, 2004, um, you know, these guys were imprisoned for their faith, again, just because they're Christians. And now, 20 years later, May 20, um, in May, there's just 20 years of just being in prison. Yeah. And that's it. Just, you're a Christian, this is your life now. Mm. I understand there's been, you know, they tried to put some pressure on the American government or something like that to try and get them free. Is that, some of that's gone on there? Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, places or people who are advocating for Christians in Eritrea because it has been recognized as one of the worst places to be a Christian or um, be any religion, really. And so um, the UNHCR has been one, one um, government uh, agency that has basically said, you know, this is one of the worst places. It's on a, on a list of, of countries of what they call a CPC, countries of particular concern. And for your country to be on that list is not, it's not a good thing. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of people who have advocated on behalf of these Christians specifically to let them free. And there was, the government did at that point, did let a few of the Christians free. But I mean, there's something like, there's thousands of Christians sitting in these governments. You know, the, um, I think in just in, 20, in 2023, over 500 Christians faced um, really long prison sentences or just really harsh prison 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 conditions man i'm having a i'm struggling today with my words hey i need another cup of coffee i reckon um, it's so good i have those days <laughs> <laughs> yeah seriously i'm like just stumbling all over the show today um but yeah the the, the message is this the, the air christians the people who are in prison especially these three um 
pastors who have been in prison for 20 years, man, they just need us to be praying for them and really advocating for them in whatever way we can. Yeah, I was just thinking about you saying about the country being on that sort of worst list of the persecuted church. I, I would I would hazard a guess that they don't actually care that they're on that list, right? Yeah, yeah no, nah, not at all. Um, they're probably quite happy about it, to be honest. Yeah, probably. Um, you know, honestly, if you're looking at a Marxist government, um, they really don't tolerate religion full stop. So in Eritrea, you've got probably half the population is Muslim, half is, is Christian, and, and neither one of those religions have a good a good go of it. So, uh, but, you know, the thing is, and here's what I love about the work that we do and, and you know, how we help in the stories that we hear is though, even though they're really hard stories, you know, you hear these these pastors who are imprisoned for their faith. I mean, can you imagine your pastor being put in prison for 20 years, no trial, worst conditions you can think of. I mean, not your nice little prison sentence at all. It's just terrible. But, you know, for me, when they, they're still Christian, you know, they're still, in, and, and that's one thing that the government does when they take them into prison. Oftentimes they'll say, if you renounce your faith, we'll let you free. Right. Can you imagine, like, can you imagine that? Renounce your faith. This is how much they hate Christianity is that they want them to renounce faith full stop and then they'll set them free. And the fact that these these Christians don't do that to me is like, man, in New Zealand, we we just for us it's a it's a testimony of of our faith. You know, we should have that kind of that heartbeat that says, no, no matter what you do to me, I love Jesus Christ and I'm gonna follow him with everything I have. Mm-hmm. I mean, goodness, I, that, to me that's just an encouragement to my faith. You oh, know? totally. Hey, uh, would you lead would you well? We'll get you to lead us in prayer in a moment because um, that's a good thing for us to do right now, don't you think, Steph? Um, I'd love to, yeah. But before we go there, just uh, if, if you're listening and it's making your heart sort of beat double time, and you want to find out more, head to the website barnabasa.org.nz. Barnabasa.org.nz. Uh, Steph, I'll let you finish up with uh, some prayer that we can all join in with together. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just are so thankful for who you are and how you love us. And in the face of persecution, um, you know, we are always challenged by our brothers and sisters who are struggling in some of the worst, harshest conditions. And and in that, Lord, I pray that you just challenge and encourage our faith to live out here um, loud, proud, and with gusto. Just um, that, that when we are tempted to kind of shrink away from these tough conversations about why we love you and why we are Christians, that we will just remember our brothers and sisters in Eritrea who have really um, paid the ultimate price of their freedom because of their faith in you. But yet in that situation, they still will not say that they are not Christian. They still will not renounce you as their Lord and Savior. So, Lord, I pray for these Christians right now that wherever they are and whatever they're doing and whatever a situation that they're in, in prison or praying quietly in a house somewhere, hoping that they don't get arrested, mm. um, that you will just strengthen them with your um, your mighty arm and your, your courage and your um, peace that passes all understanding. And Lord, may you give them such a, a, um, a nudge of the Holy Spirit to know that there are, are their Fano, their family in New Zealand who are praying for them, who do love them and really care about them. Mm. So let them know that, let them feel that in the core of their being, that they are not forgotten. And Lord, just be with us today. I pray that you do give us um, challenging situations where we can step into our faith and re- and pronounce you as our Lord and Savior in, in such a strong way. Um, and Lord, for those who are um, traumatized and have fled to different countries, be with them as well, provide for them and their needs. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Steph. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you can catch all our interviews on Star. See you next time.